the best soft protector for your Funko Pops? Let's talk about it. Welcome to the gas again. We're so glad you're there, sir. You get the right time. We had an all time line. Bumble's out, toys, and chimes. Don't mind. Stick around, like, comment, and be sure to subscribe because life's a little better when you answer Chris and Heather. Hey, life's a little better when you answer Chris and Heather. Hey, life's a little better when you answer Chris and Heather. And remember, if you tell them all, we are together. Yes. One of the most asked questions within Funko groups, what is the best soft protector to protect my pops with? In this video, we're gonna compare some soft protectors from 10 different companies. Just note that this isn't every single soft protector that's on the market. However, it's some of the top businesses that we personally have seen promoted in these posts asking, what's the best soft protector? We have Shumi, Pop Fiend, Vaulted Vinyl, Loot Lock, Chalice, Heroes Hideout, Titan Shield, Seven bucks a pop, Funko, and Malco. We asked a bunch of people what people look for most when searching for a soft protector. Stackability, durability, and cost were the top three things that people answered. We're gonna do some tests with these pop protectors. We're gonna see which one is the easiest to build, how they stack, how durable they are with a couple different tests like a drop test, and we're gonna compare the cost of all these different soft protectors. First up, we're doing a build test and a stackability test. To be fair, Chris is gonna take one of each protector and I'm gonna take one of each protector and we're each gonna build the same one just in case one of us has like a different technique from the other. Or if we're too stupid to build it. That is definitely possible. First up, we have Pop Fiend protectors. So when looking at cost for these, I did a low quantity cost and I did a high quantity cost. Generally, with most of these protectors, I tried to say around 20 protectors for the low quantity. For the high quantity, it was normally like 100 or 200, depending on what the company offered. Each company is different though. So for 20 Pop Fiend protectors, they come out to be about $1.50 per protector. And for the high quantity, which is 100 protectors, they're roughly $1.10. I'd also like to note that these are 0.5 millimeters in thickness. They feel pretty sturdy to me. These need a little bit of help. They do have a tutorial video on how to build these, but this is just me building it as I would any other protector. But they suggest that when you're building it, you sort of crease the edges. Okay. And I've noticed that with a lot of protectors, you have to do that. That's not abnormal at all. Yeah, mine actually came out pretty good. Yeah, mine too. Perfect. Now the question is, how do they stack? Because that's one of the biggest important things to me, because I hate when I put all my pop protectors with my Funko Pops in them up on a shelf and they're falling down. Yeah, because there's like a big bubble at the top. So they stack. Yeah, they stack up pretty well. That's perfect. Nice. Okay, so next up we have Chalice. These are 0.5 millimeters as well. To me, they feel very similar to the last ones. They do. For the lower quantity, which was 20, they come out to be a dollar a piece. And for the higher quantity, which was 200, they come out to be only 70 cents a piece. Wow, that's pretty good. Yeah. Wow. That was pretty simple. That was very simple, actually. And I didn't really have to mess with the, the corners or anything with these. No, but one thing that I do have to note is that inside the corners, see this? This is a complaint that I saw with a lot of soft protectors. A lot of people will say that the corners for certain soft protectors are thinner because they're sort of thick protectors and they wouldn't quite bend right if they didn't, like have that line down the middle. Oh, I see, cuz it's like that? yeah, there's like a break there. Luckily for us, these didn't these didn't break at all. The complaint that I see is that when putting them together, sometimes they break. And it's okay. not I'm not talking about this particular brand. I'm just stating in general a complaint that people do have with certain protectors is that little bit of a line down the middle. One note is that on the bottom of this pop protector, it actually says chalice. And on the pop fiend, you'll see it, it's actually up here. We didn't point that out. But some of these pop protectors actually have the name of the company listed on them, which makes it easier when you're going through all your pop protectors to find out the one that you actually really like. Some of the ones you'll find on Amazon don't have a name at all. Exactly, because they're garbage. Yeah, because they're like bull no names. <laughs> so these are pretty flat as well. I don't see us having a problem. They stack just fine. 
All right, so this is from Vaulted Vinyl, and there's a little piece of paper in each one of these. Yeah, interesting. These are 0.5 millimeters. The low quantity is 20 protectors, and they come to $1.75 each. The high quantity, which they have on their website listed as 80, they get knocked down to $1.25 per protector. So that's the most expensive one so far? Yes. This one actually has a vaulted vinyl logo on it, and it says protect your passion. So I don't know if I got left. like a rough one, but this one was tricky to put together. So I'm noticing that this one, you actually have to crease this one. And this is another one with like the thin yes. corner. Yes, yes. So it's like it's thick here and it's thick here, but when it meets, and there's no way that I could show you this on camera, but when it meets, it looks very thin right there. I don't consider that a problem. I have never really had a run-in with many protectors. I'm mostly out of box these days, but that's a complaint that some people have. They hmm. say that it's often when they're putting it together or like if they reuse a protector a couple times over and over, they end up breaking. Okay, yeah, Good. they stack just fine. Yeah, you just, there's a little bit of effort with these. You do have to crease them a bit, but I don't really see it as a problem as long as it protects your pops. Alrighty, these are Malco protectors, and it looks like they have a film. This is our first protector that we have so far that has like a film on the top. And my guess is it's to protect the protectors from getting scratched during transit. Yeah, I don't think I like this so much. I don't like doing extra work. Got it. Well, I don't think anybody does. But you'd also be upset if your protectors came scratched, so what would you prefer? Yeah, exactly. I do prefer that some of these other companies separate them by a thin layer of plastic and then they wrap them. These are pop fiend. So basically they have this piece of like wrapping. There's one protector unwrap it, another protector. Yeah, I like that. I mean, that's that's nice, and it gives you less work than pulling like shrink wrap off of there. And look, you even left yeah, some. Yeah, you get some left behind. Yeah, it's annoying. All right, so this one actually says Malco on it, on the bottom. Ooh. What am I doing here? I feel like I'm broken. Just grab a corner. Listen, I'm an idiot. There you go. There we go. Oh, and this one actually has a, uh, it does like have the tab. A little tab, yeah. Some people like these, other people don't. I don't like tabs. Yeah, I, I find them to be sort of annoying to like get in there, but I know that a lot of people prefer them because they feel like it secures their pop better in the protector. So, so that's just sort of an opinion thing. You have to run your fingers across the creases a little bit on these, but that's actually not so bad. They stack really well. So as far as Malco goes, this is another 0.5 millimeter. Their low quantity, which is 20, costs a dollar five a piece, and their high quantity, which is 200, is 80 cents a piece. Wow. All right. Next up is Loot Lock. All of them that we showed before Malco had the same sort of packing as the Pop Fiends did. They were all separated by like a thin sheet of plastic. But these, they just put in like almost saran wrap and package them all together. All right, so this one also has a tab on it, and at the top it has a loot lock symbol. This was very easy for me to put together. Yeah, it was pretty easy, and it's it's pretty flat also. You don't have to mess with the corners so much. Yeah, I, did, I didn't really have to squeeze the corners any extra. Again, this one has a tab, but I think you already pointed that out. Yeah, tabs, the one thing I don't like about tabs is that when you're trying to push that tab in, I feel like there's a chance of bending the box. Although I understand trying to lock it down or keep it more secure, I just don't like it. And that's personal preference. So these are 0.5 millimeters, just like all the rest of them so far. Their low quantity is 20 and they come to a dollar twenty per protector. Their high quantity is a hundred and it knocks them down to ninety cents per protector. And they stack really well also. The stackability is good. Nice. Alrighty we got Heroes Hideout up next and it looks like these come wrapped but they have the plastic on the outside. They do, and the plastic is so easy to pull off. I love that because well, I'm so lazy and I don't want to go through all this, but this actually made it pretty easy to do. Well, yours was easy. I'm having a hard time, but I think it's because I'm stupid. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, there's the little pieces and remnants and stuff I'm still having to pull off, but that's okay. And it built very easily. 
Uh, you don't have to crease it like too much. It was already sort of creased well. I only had to crease the top. I like this one. I like that there's no tab. So this one says Heroes Hideout right on the bottom. I don't know if we'll run into one of these or not, but some of them will not stack because it's warped on the top. It's like sort of rounded and they suck. I hate those types of protectors. I typically throw them right in the trash can, but protectors like this, these are great. So these you can only buy in single form. They're 0.45 millimeters, so they're a little bit thinner than the other ones we have tested so far. And they're 79 cents a piece. Wow, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's a great price. And that's just for one. So if you were to buy 100, it would be $79. Alrighty, so now we have Funko protectors. Oh boy. And Funko actually puts out the products that we're protecting, so they must know what they're doing. So these come in packs of five. You can buy them from Walmart, Target, GameStop, all sorts of different places. And they do vary in price, but I pulled prices from GameStop. They are $7.99 for a five pack, so they're about $1.60 per protector. Also, these are the thinnest, not just so far, but like period in this entire video. They're 0.3 millimeters. Wow. And it looks like each protector is separated in the box with a piece of like plastic film. Look at this. That's trippy. Look at that. that. That right there tells you enough. I think that tells you all you need to know. These are really bad. Yeah, I don't know why you even make protectors if they're not doing anything. It does say Funko on the bottom really small and it's actually printed. I don't know what this is meant to protect because it's so thin. It almost feels as thin as the window on the Funko Pop itself. They at least stack. They stack. That's a plus. So they've got that going for them. I don't know. I, these are the thinnest that we've messed with so far, and you can totally feel it. Pretty sad when you're the ones, like, making the product. Don't you want your product kept nice? Alrighty, next up we have Shumi protectors. Ooh, okay. Up oh, another filmy one. Alright, so the film is sort of, like, split for each side, sort of. All right, so that wasn't so terrible to pull off. Okay, easy to build. There we go. So these are the non-tabbed ones, but Shumi actually has a tabbed version on their website as well, and they're the same cost as this. So you can choose whether you prefer tabbed or non-tabbed. These are 0.6 millimeters, so these are the thickest so far. Their low quantity is 20 protectors, and they're $1.40 a piece. And their high quantity is 200, which takes them down to $1.10 a piece. Alrighty, so now we have Titan Shield. They have their logo on the bottom and pretty easy to put together. Yeah, very easy. They do have a tab, 0.5 millimeters. Their low quantity is 20 and they're $1.20 a piece. Their high quantity is 100 and they're roughly 90 cents a piece. So not the cheapest and not the most expensive, but they stack well, so that's what counts. Yeah, it does. So here's a seven bucks a pop pop shield. And this one, unfortunately, has the plastic on it as well. But it comes off fairly easy, so that's good. All right, so building them is pretty easy. It definitely needs some more creasing, like a lot more creasing. So these are 0.45 millimeters. And for the low quantity, which is 20, they come to 95 cents. And the high quantity is 200, which comes to be 65 cents a piece. That's the cheapest one. However, you can get them as cheap as 53 cents each if you go up and take their 1200 piece option. Wow. Yeah. How many pop collectors do you know that have less than 1200 I know, pops? right? It seems like within the first like two months you have that many. They stack really well, both on the side and on top of each other. That's nice. awesome. And they also have the Pop Shield logos on the top. Alrighty, so these are the things that come in the Pop Protectors, Funko's Hard Pop Protector, and we've decided to use these for some of our tests. So first up, we're going to figure out how easy they are to get into each of the protector. All right, so this is Funko's protector. And this is seven bucks a pop. Right. 
So mine was easy to get in. They stack okay against each other, so that's not bad. Yeah, although with this one, I see it bubbling up. Yeah, it bubbles up for sure. But because it's such like a thin material, I feel like that's the only reason it can sort of stack up semi-well. Right. I do see a little bit of wobbliness, but not enough for me to be super concerned. Okay, getting it out is a totally different ball game. I got chalice. And I have a shoemy protector. Oh yeah, that was easy. Easy peasy. Stacks? Does that stack? Good. Perfect. All right, I've got Pop Fiend. And this is a Malco. Like a glove. Having a hard time over there? I just am not good with tabs. This is why I don't like tabs. But I got it. This one's incredibly flat. So some of these you have to take a bit extra care to just like sort of squeeze the top. Since this is obviously not a pop and it's nothing that I care about, I squeeze it while the pop was in there. Do not recommend that. I would recommend pulling the pop out if you have this issue and just sort of squeezing down on those corners. I have loot lock. And I have vaulted vinyl. Ooh, might Ooh. made a fart noise. <laughs> I am having a problem with this one. I do want to take a look at the other one to see if it has the same issue because it might've been put together funny. The bottoms of this where it was put together is pushing the pop up. This is exactly why I wanted to test these. Open that one up. That's another vaulted vinyl. Yep. Yeah. Oh, it's having the same problem. problem. So you kind of have to push it down. I mean, I don't see that as a huge problem. I just don't know like if that could push into the bottom of the pop or not, or if it would force you to sort of like brush your pop down. Well, like this one is by Loot Lock and it's, it's being pushed up just a little bit. Yeah, but that's not nearly as much as this one. Yeah, that one's way up there. Yeah. Maybe that's good because it gives it like a little bit of a shock protection when it hits the ground. I worry about the bottom of the pops getting damaged because the whole reason people are collecting them is to protect them, right? It could be good or bad, I don't know. I don't know if it's that good. But it's in there. It doesn't yeah. seem to have pressed on the bottom. Uh -uh. And they stack up on both sides. Man, this stupid little tab. I hate the, I hate these tabs. I really you know do. You do. I hate them. All right, I have Titan Shield. And I have Heroes Hideout. All right, so this one is similar to the last one. This one as well. Where it comes up. Yeah. Like, I don't see the pop giving or anything when I'm pressing down on it. And they stack up just fine on each other. Nice. Perfect. Okay, so next up, we're gonna do a drop test from pretty high onto our hard floors. Okay, so we have a vision that we use for our marker off, I guess you would call it, because we wanted a weighted Funko Pop in here and we don't care about this 50s vision. So what we have done is we took an end table to give us some height, like sort of bookshelf height, and we set it on top of our dining room table. So I'm just gently gonna knock this off and it'll basically just show you what would happen if a pop were to fall off your bookshelf. Okay, this is a Shumi protector. So it looks like it took a little bit of damage. You can't really see it, I don't think. Can you see oh, it? Oh yeah. Just a little bit, but let's see about the pop. Perfectly fine. No damage? Nope, no damage at all. All right, next up we have a seven bucks a pop protector. All right, a little bit of damage to the protector. Well, it's doing what it's supposed to. It's protecting them. Looks good to me. Hey, you married me, so if you're saying it looks good, I don't know if that's right or not. Yeah, that's not right. Alrighty, here's a Malco protector. I'm not seeing any damage on the protector. Wow, that's pretty good. I mean, I guess a lot of it also has to do with how it falls because I remember one of them falling like flat and then this one landed sort of upright. Alrighty, we've got Heroes Hideout. Okay, so that opened on impact, but again, I feel like a lot of that has to do with how it falls. Hey, Valo, we're busy. Can you go so we can do our tests? Okay, I'm not seeing any damage on the protector itself, but that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for like issues with the pop. 
And again, I am not seeing any. But there was damage to the protector itself. No, there was no damage to the No protector. damage. No. Perfect. Alrighty, this is a Titan Shield Protector. That sounded like a hard hit. Yes, it did. Okay, a little bit of damage to the protector. Ooh, okay. So the protector got damaged. Let me show wow. you what we've got. It actually broke apart at the seam. And this is one of those that has, like I had mentioned earlier, um, the thin seam right here. So it did break apart and it did crack. Nothing else that I'm seeing though. It did cause a bit of corner damage. Diagnosis, Doc? Very minimal damage, but still damage. That's our first damage of the day. Alrighty, this is a loot lock protector. So this one is pretty rough. Wow. Look at that. Wow, it like splintered and everything. Yeah, and it hit in the same exact spot as the last one. Man, it did more damage. Yeah. So it's sort of hard to say how much of that is this one and how much of that is that one, but this corner didn't protect this corner at all. Alrighty, here is a chalice protector. A little bit of damage right here for the protector. Let's see how that front corner looks. Wow. Yeah, it's split wide open. Yeah, I got the... Oh yeah, I got it pretty good. Wow. But that corner keeps getting hit, doesn't it? Uh-uh, it's this oh, corner. Oh, it's the back one. Yeah. Oh, this wow. This is the first damage for the front corner. Wow. Alrighty, we're getting close to the end. This is a vaulted vinyl. Ready? So corner got damaged, front corner got damaged. So there's a the damage here. There's some damage here. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty rough. It's hard to say how much damage that caused because it literally hit the first two corners. But this wrinkle wasn't there before. I mean, I don't see that as that big of a deal. Right. But realistically, we're looking at the pop protector itself. Yeah. And some of these pop protectors are being crippled yeah there, after they fall on the floor there's damage back here as well and there's damage down here oh yeah it ripped it interesting yeah that's weird yeah Alrighty, so here's a pop fiend so far i'm not really seeing any damage to this protect ah uh, there's a little bit of corner damage Oh yeah, but broke a this, little bit off it. Yeah, this one isn't like detrimental like some of the other ones. Let's see that bottom corner though. No damage to the bottom corner. Great. So what's the last pop protector we gotta test? Well, I saved the worst for last because I didn't want to totally f up the pop before we got to, to everything else. Um, this is the 0.3 millimeter Funko protector. Oh God. Ready? Oh my God, I'm shocked. So even though this gives a lot, it still got pretty messed up. Wow. Which I'm honestly shocked about. I didn't expect to see any damage on the actual protector because it's so like bendable. Like, look at this. I can make it do the wave. There's no more damage on it than there was before. Wow. Which so, is honestly shocking. All right, so overall, not a lot of damage from the Funko protector. No, and honestly, like dropping it with 10 protectors, there's not a crazy amount of damage on this pop. So they are doing their job for the most part. Granted, again, this is pretty high up and we're on a hard floor, but I mean, I'd say it took very minimal damage. So during our little test, we did have some pop protector damage. This is the Titan Shield. It has sort of like this broken crease here, which isn't considerably bad. This loot lock has some major damage up here in this corner. Vaulted vinyl is pretty rough on this side. A little bit less on this side, but there is still some damage. And then Chalice has uh, a crack on the side and also broken up here on the back. The only reason why I want to point this out is because we buy these to protect our Funko Pops. 
and they are protecting our Funko Pops. But the issue that I have, if it falls off your shelf once, it just implodes like this. Even though we sort of controlled the situation and I literally just nudged them down, how much was caused by how they landed? Right. You know what I mean? True. Because we did notice some that landed like this, some landed like this, some landed like this. So I, I think that also plays a role in it, but we controlled the situation as much as we possibly could. Some of them broke and some didn't. I would honestly say I would buy pretty much all of these other than the Funko one. Although the Funko one did a pretty good job of protecting the Funko Pop also. Which is shocking, and I feel like maybe that one didn't land as hard as some of the others. I agree, yeah. I feel like there should have been, like, a broken pop with that one. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, so with everything that we did today between building and how they came packaged, what would you say are the pros and what are the cons? Like, what do you like and not like about them? I don't like tabs. And you don't like tabs because they're I, just tricky to get in? Well, they're hard to get in, and then sometimes when you're trying to put them in, you're ending up, like, damaging your own Funko Pop. Okay. Because you're, like, sort of, like, fooling around with it. Okay. And you can bend it and put creases in it. So I don't like them for that reason. Okay, so you don't like the tabs, but the pro to the tab is sort of to keep that top in place? Right, it's to secure it. That to me is sort of preference, although it is very annoying to have to like stick that in. It's really tedious. I also didn't like when you had to peel plastic off the Funko Pop protectors. Yes, I feel like that's a bit much in my opinion. I do like when they wrapped them like one by one in that long piece of plastic. But I understand that the pro is to keep them from getting scratched during transit. I also really like the protectors that were easier to build. I like that also. I don't like having to fiddle around with it and increase all the sides and everything. I hate having to do that. And there were some protectors here where you didn't have to do that at all. You literally built it and you tucked it in and that was it. And then some of them, you sort of had to crease the edges or with the Funko one, for example, that thing's just a huge mess. No matter how much creasing I had to do, it wouldn't make me not buy it. I just prefer not having to do that. Yeah, well, especially if you have a huge collection. Exactly. If you have to protect like 100 Funko Pops at the same time, it's a real hassle to have to go through and crease them. Or click a ton of tabs in. Oh, yeah. Or pull a ton of plastic off. So there were pop protectors that cracked trying to protect the Funko Pop, and then some of these cracked and damaged the Funko Pop. I don't like that at all because it's not even a pop protector anymore. But we have to keep in mind that the damage was sort of minimal. I don't know. It kind of rubs me the wrong way. Me too. Okay, so as far as the thinnest and the thickest go, the thinnest was the 0.3 millimeter, which was Funko. Very, very flimsy. But again, we didn't see damage on the pop or any more damage on the pop than what we had seen before. They're a $1.60 a piece. Right, which yeah. is on the much higher end, and they're very flimsy. The harder pop protectors, the thicker ones, actually had a tendency to, to like break more than the flimsy one. Yeah, and I feel like that led to more damage. Exactly. Thick is not always best. You know what I'm talking about. The thickest one was Shumi at 0.6 millimeters. The Shumi one held up really well, though. There was virtually no damage to that Funko Pop Protector. Okay, so as far as cost goes, I have a low quantity winner and I have a high quantity winner and they're different. So the lower quantity, like we had stated before, Heroes Hideout, they sell their protectors individually. They don't even have bundles of them. You can't buy like 10 at a time. You basically just add the quantity you want to your cart. Each protector is 79 cents. That's really good. The most expensive, Vaulted Vinyl, at $34.99 for a 20 pack, which was $1.75 per protector. The second most expensive, surprisingly, was Funko at $1.60 per protector. Wow. As far as the higher quantities go, the winner on that was seven bucks a pop. For 200 of them, you get them for 65 cents each. Runner up was Chalice at 70 cents each for 200. That's not bad. No, not bad at all. And like we stated before, pop collectors have a ton of pops. It's very rare that you'll meet somebody with just like 30 Funko Pops. Like generally most collectors have a collection within the hundreds, sometimes even thousands if you're crazy like us. We just wanna say thank you for all the companies that provided us with these pop protectors to use in this video today. We so appreciate you allowing us to do all these tests and potentially destroy your protectors. We're very sorry if anything of yours got destroyed and that hurt your heart. 
Additionally, some of the companies who sent us pot protectors also sent us a pack to give away. So keep an eye on our future videos. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and that little bell. That way you know anytime we post new content because you never know when we might be giving a pack of those away. So what did you think about our Pop Protect Off? And what is your very favorite pop protector to use for your fungo pops? Let us know all that and more in the comment section down below. In every video, we like to shout out to some of our patrons from Patreon. In this video, we'd like to shout out to Hassan E., Justin and Stacey McKenzie, Kevin Hartke, Stephen Owens, Tyler C., Ryan Guerrero, Shroot Farm Pops, Kaz Brooks, Sean Neal, and Robert Offley. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. We appreciate all of our patrons. You guys rock. All right, it's that time again. Remember, as always, we hunt together, yes. We'll catch you next time. Bye.